his pace is like 100 miles an hour. Of course. Back, go straight to college. I want to go to med school. And then yep. it's like 150, 160, night shift. Air Bart, you're my you're partner. You're my party. It's, I was it's like, So Bart Kwan, what dude, up, dude? what's going on, man? I'm so glad that you were able to take time to come out here and, and talk to me for a little bit. Like, for those of you that don't know, like, uh, Bart Kwan here and I have been kind of like talking back and forth on Instagram. That's kind of where I found you. I saw one of your podcast videos. Yeah. And I was like, this dude is hilarious. Who is this guy? Like, and I looked you up and I found out you were in the Marine Corps at one point. Yeah, like, I think, I don't know if. I found you first, or you found me first? I, I don't know. I think I saw one of your, like, super viral podcasts out there, and I was like, bro, who is this oh, guy? Like, okay, yeah, And yeah, I yeah, DM'd yeah, yeah. you, I was like, yeah, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah. who are you? Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. what's your story? So, like, when did, when did you serve in the Marine Corps? So, I, in high school, uh, so I look way younger than I am. Yeah, you look a lot younger than me. I got a ton of gray hair. Uh, you how, don't old have are, any, how old are I'm you? I'm 37. You're 37? Yeah, bro. I'm 40 this year. You're 40? Yeah. Bro, you, <laughs> you, how do you age so gracefully, bro? You're three know. years older than me. You I don't think, have any gray hair. I think hair. it's the gel. It's so the gel? my barber just told me while he was cutting my hair, he's yeah. like, I never look at your hair. I always look at the hairstyle. And he goes, I have a lot of gray hairs. But I think because my hair is black, yeah. So when I gel it, you don't really see it. Yeah, I can't see a single gray hair on your head, man. Yeah. Hey, you yeah. look good. But I, uh, yeah, I, I graduated high school in 2003, and I was one of those kids. That I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. Didn't yeah. really do too good in school, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, what should I do? So I went uh, up and down all these uh, recruiting offices in our local, like, recruiting station. Sure. And I remember uh, going to the Navy, like, tell me about the Navy. And then they kind of gave me, like, this whole used car salesman pitch, like, you want to see the world, bro? You yeah. know, like, and I was like, Ugh, I don't know. I don't vibe with this guy. Yeah. Talked to the Army guy. It was like, whatever. And then I remember going to the Marine Corps uh office knocked on the door hello like no one was there right and then this guy comes out from underneath the desk like like rubbing his eyes like <laughs> like what do you want and i was like uh i was thinking about joining the marine corps <laughs> he was under his desk yeah he was sleeping like, taking a nap taking a nap you could see like his sleeping bag and he was taking a nap and he was like He's like, uh, well, hurry up, because I got to go coach wrestling. And I was like, dude, I think I found my people. <laughs> <laughs> That's the craziest story ever. He was yeah. like, passed out under his desk, and he's like, and you're like, yeah, I think this is where I belong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know. There's something this about my like, people right here. like that rawness, yeah. you know? And then you kind of see like the few and the proud, and you're like, okay, this is cool. Like, I kind of like this vibe. Yeah. Like, and I'm kind of like rough around the edges. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm like, I think this is what I want to do. So I ended up signing up. Um, and I was trying to do the whole college route, so I did. I signed up as a reservist. Okay. And man, I did wish I watched more like commercials. Sure. <laughs> or knew more people in the military. Yeah. Because as I was choosing my MOS, it was literally like I was like, "How long is that MOS school?" He's like, "Oh, that one's like six months." I was like, "Ah, too long." Yeah. And I was like, "How long is that one?" He's like, "Oh, that one's like uh, 30 days. This is whatever." And I was just going down the list. And I, I don't think I was in the mi the right mindset to choose something that I think would actually benefit me or be really cool later on. Yeah. How so old I, were you when you went to the recruiting station? 18, I think. Okay, so you are 18. Yeah, it's hard. When you're 18 years old, it's like you don't necessarily think about that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, that, that would never have crossed my mind either. I would have just been like, I want to do this. Like, what do I got to do to get into boot camp? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and then you meet other people in boot camp, and they're yeah. like, oh, my dad was a Marine or whatever, and they talk me through, and they just know all these, like, Benefits like I've met a guy with a two-year term before. Yeah. Have you ever met anyone like that? A two-year term in, in enlisted. I've never seen. I didn't know that they could do two-year contracts. Yeah. What year did you enlist? 2003. 2003. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So it was a while. Yeah. Like, I met a back, guy. Back. I, I met a guy and he did a. Two, he has a two-year contract. I was like. like I've, yeah. I've never heard of that. Yeah. That's crazy. In boot camp with the two-year contract. So I was just like, dude. I think I was just like really quick to just sign. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up choosing a supply admin. Okay. My unit was really cool though. Um, it was third Anglico. So they do all kinds of like really like, as a supply guy. Yeah. With me and my like the stories that me and my other friends have, are like way different. Yeah. Like as a boot at my unit, like they send like none of the the um, none of the chiefs want to go to the field. Oh so really? They, so if like they send everyone, you know. So like I've literally like every drill was humps shooting like cqb type stuff yeah and then all my other buddies are like oh i've just been in a warehouse all day or you know i'm like that's so it was kind of cool that i ended up joining a, a pretty cool unit that's dope and is third anglico in hawaii or is it in okinawa or where is that third anglico is in at that time was at terminal island it's like a little island off the coast of long beach 
Oh, so it's in California. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. like SoCal. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So I did that for six years while I was going to school. Yeah, where did you go to school? UCLA. UCLA? Yeah. How'd you like it there? It was pretty cool. It was cool to see, like, a big, diverse group of people, people sure. coming in from, like, all different backgrounds. And, yeah, uh, that's a big school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And how, how long did you go? That You went there for four years? So I went to a community college for three years. Okay, me too. I did kind of the same. Yeah, because I, yeah, there's no way I was coming straight was out of poor. high school. Probably, I was too poor. <laughs> I think I was, I was too dumb and not good enough grades. That too. I was also dumb when I was when I was 18. I was not ready for a four-year university. I would have failed out and I wasted all my money. Yeah, I needed to kind of build the building blocks of like yeah. what does studying even mean? Yeah. <laughs> what What is study? <laughs> I yeah. never studied in high school, so I didn't know how to do that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I didn't study, and then I'm like, I would like see guys like just ace the test, and I'm like, yeah. Yo, how do you do that? And you're like, yeah. well, first of all, I don't sleep in class. Yeah, so like, okay, that's, that's a good first step, you know. <laughs> step <laughs> number awake. one. Uh, step number two, he's like, I like to sit in the front because okay. then you're not as distracted. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll start doing that. Cause I did that too when I was in when I was an uh, older gentleman in college. I would sit in the front when I could. Yeah. Then I get like, okay, I'm locked in. I can't be passing out up here because everybody will see me passed out. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you, have in bad, the front. you have bad habits as a kid. You want to be the cool guy, right? So yeah. like, I don't care about this. Yeah. You sit in the back. <laughs> I'm going to be chill in the back and just like draw pictures on my notebook you know and the whole quarter goes by and you're like i didn't learn a single thing yeah i don't remember anything that happened this whole year yeah so, <laughs> I know. so i had to like build all those skills yeah yeah from the ground up and my friends would be like you know you know what i do i'm like dude how do you even do homework yeah i'm like i hate homework by the time i get him i don't want to do it and he, and he would structure his classes where he has like an hour in between each class oh, so right okay. after the class he would finish homework and then so like just all those type of like time management yeah i had to like learn all that stuff from the ground up as i didn't yeah. do very good in high school i had to relearn all that i think honestly part part of what helped me develop some sort of like routine like that where yeah. i've got some structure to my life i think was partially from the military just because yeah. like you get so much structure in the military where you're like from timeline to timeline and having to be places 15 minutes prior and then 15 minutes prior to that and then you have to get somewhere else and you got to figure out how you're going to get from a to b and nobody's like planning your day out for you necessarily but you're expected to be where you're supposed to be at the prescribed time or whatever and like yeah. that helped me kind of learn how to manage my own time so that once once i got accepted into the program where i could do like enlisted to commissioning program or whatever right yeah i, w I went to unc and i was like okay I have to set up a schedule where I have time to go to the gym. You went to UNC as enlisted? Yeah, I was in. So I like, did a, like, like an enlisted uh, commissioning program, basically. Oh, how does that work? So I put it, I dropped the package for in 2019 and I got selected for it. And I, you have to go to OCS first. It's called the MESAP. Well, it's called the MESAP, which stands for Marine Corps Enlisted Commissioning Education Program. So were you just like active the whole time? I was act, considered active duty the entire time, even while in college. So the two years I spent in college counts as time in service towards what? retirement. Yes. So like two of the years I've been in was in college. That's which sick. Is the the greatest gig of ever dude i'm getting paid i'm getting bah while i'm yeah, there yeah, yeah, i'm yeah, yeah. getting paid my normal paychecks every two Whoa. weeks i'm going to college full time i was working as a bouncer at a bar there just meeting people hanging out yeah. like making that like connections with people and just making friends and then going to school I, at, because you have to, i was like, older keep regs and everything yeah you got to keep right you're still active duty so you got to keep regs you got to take leave if you're going anywhere you don't get to just be off work uh, during like the holidays and stuff because it's Are there like, any like drills you have to show up yeah, for you or show, PFTs yeah. you have to do? Yeah, you got to take PFT, CFT still like normal. Uh, you, the one thing you're exempt from while you're there is, uh, is qualifying on the rifle range and the pistol range oh. because they don't, they're so far away yeah. from the nearest base. It's logistically difficult, so they get you waivers for that. But you still run the PFT and CFT. They have field track and field stuff. You PT with them like usually once or twice a week. Uh, you have to go to a naval science lab. That's like you, the one you thing. PT with the recruiters or with you PT like with the the NROTC program. Oh, I see. So that's the big thing that that they that's the big like crux of the whole MESEP is that you have to apply to a college that has an NROTC program because they're the people that take accountability of you while you're at the college and like they're making sure that you're alive and they're like they're the ones that like get your purse stats and all that and they they're the ones that administer the PFT and CFT. Um, you have to take a couple of naval science classes while you're there as part of the program. It's a requirement to graduate. Uh, you have to maintain a certain GPA while you're in college. I think it was like 2.5 or something. Nothing crazy. Uh, and then you have to, um, I forget. There's a, there's a bunch of other like little things that the That's NROTC program. That's super cool, though. Yeah, but you, and wow. the good thing is, is you get to talk to and like sort of 
to a certain degree mentor some of these younger yeah. cats that are like 18 to 21 that are midshipmen that are potentially going into the Navy or going into the Marine Corps and like you get to talk to a lot of them and like teach them stuff that you've learned and give them you know give them some experiences that you've had and like tell them a little bit what it's like to be in the fleet depending on what branch they're going into and um, just give them insight on like kind of like what military life is and like yeah. how, what, what's to be expected there are some prior enlisted uh, Navy cats that go into these things but there's a lot of Marines that also do as well um, what made you want to go from enlisted and then into like the officers program so and how long were you enlisted for I was enlisted for seven years uh, before okay. I actually commissioned so I joined I signed up in 2013 actually went to boot camp 2014 and then I was enlisted I went I went all the way I, I was in Hawaii for my first enlistment because I was there I got there in 2014 I was there for five years in second battalion third marines in the weapons company I was a tow gunner uh, in the infantry but then I I left there went to college in 2019 and was there until 2021 and I commissioned in 2021 so I think that's seven years um, but I want uh, I think the big thing that kept me wanting to stay in is that I can I saw how much of an impact you can have as an officer instead mm -hmm. of being enlisted where uh, because like at the end of the day like the shiny guys write the orders and like in they're the ones that like say this is what we're doing yeah and then the enlisted are the ones that are like we're gonna enforce what they said we're going to do mm. you know so you can have a significant impact on people in a positive and a negative way yeah uh, when you're an officer so like that's one of the big things that kept me around because I wanted to I, I've seen what it's like to have like really bad leadership not not that like I you know I would ever out people for that publicly because that's not really like my thing but yeah. I have had examples of both I know what incredible leadership's like I know what bad leadership's like and so I knew and I, I know today still what kind of a positive impact you can have on people's lives like personally and professionally um, as an officer and being in positions of authority like that where you can you know, make sure people are getting enough time to spend with their families, making sure that people are being taken care of and that they're getting their needs met, like whether it be like medical related or dental stuff or mental health stuff, or if people are having a hard time at the house, that they understand like what types of uh, things are available for them for like counseling and like services that are afforded to families they may not know about or like, you know, financial management opportunities, whatever, whatever the case may be, like you, you can make sure that people are aware of this stuff and like you have a real you have a real ability to, to help people you know and that planning to do the the 20 years or yeah yeah for sure i'm gonna do the 20 and i i like i could have got out i could make way more money out in the civilian sector just yeah. like everybody else is you know what i mean but like it's rewarding to me the most rewarding thing to me is actually helping people that's awesome and that's one of the reasons i do this stuff on social media that i do in the first place is because like I can have a tangible impact on people's lives and also do like philanthropy stuff like because that's that's the cool thing for me like yeah it got me started is wanting to like just do something to help other people because i get the most gratification like personally from doing something for other people it takes a lot of my time and it, i i'm working all the time and i have a really unhealthy work-life balance right now <laughs> but, but i i ultimately like it's i i feel very fulfilled because I've, I've been able to do a lot of really cool stuff and i've met a lot of incredible people that are doing awesome things for the you got community. two jobs pretty much you have to do the social media stuff yeah and then you have your full-time active marine yeah and then i was like if th i think when i first came across your content I was like, oh, cool, he's a Marine, he's making content, like all your commentaries. And yeah. I'm like, oh, shit, he's an officer. Yeah. Because it's rare for officers to even be on social media. Yeah. And it I is. Was like, it is. Is rare. there like a certain level of scrutiny, either from your peers or like. I would say, I would say, here's the thing. So, like, I've, I've had, I would say the majority of the interactions I have have been supportive in nature because people see that I'm trying to do things that actually help people. And, and you have got a positive, positive voice about things. Yes. Yeah. And I have a positive voice. I'm not like out there, you know, complaining and bitching and moaning yeah, about yeah, stuff yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm not like uh i'm not like what's it called doxing people on the yeah, internet yeah. i'm not bringing i'm not talking about stuff that's like toxic toxic yeah. in nature trying i'm trying to bring to, a negative light yeah to it. i don't want to i don't want to do that i want to try to keep it as positive there's enough that's negativity cool. out there on the internet man like it is that is like not my thing i want to do what i can I, I like to be informative i like teaching people about like current events and current affairs because i think it's important because that specifically in like that affects our 
you know, community in general, just because the military is so involved in world affairs and current affairs. Yeah. Like something that happens across the planet could absolutely directly impact this person, this PFC's life in you know the second marine logistics group or yeah. wherever you're at you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and uh so that's that that piece is important like understanding like we're in world affairs current affairs also teaching stuff teaching stuff that i that i like knowledge that i've learned when i was in the infantry or throughout training or whatever like about you know uh weaponry about like weapon systems uh, about armor, about whatever. Like, I think that's all cool stuff to know, too, because it's just good to have general knowledge. It makes us all better the more that we know. And sometimes it's hard for me to remember everything because I just, like, my brain gets filled with so much information. Yeah. I, it starts pouring out of my ears and I can't maintain all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I still think that's important, too. And then on top of that, like, sharing, like, getting the word out about things that I think are important and things that are relevant to the community and things that I think awareness should be raised about, like mental health stuff mm. or if there's people like hunter seven foundation who are working with huxworks in this booth that we're working at right now like hunter seven does a lot of stuff to uh raise awareness about like toxic exposures with veterans and stuff and they raise a lot of money for cancer screenings mm. for vets and they pay for like free screenings for people that are like one thousand two hundred fifty dollars per screening but they wow. raise they raise like I think their budget's like 300k a year that they basically spend on screening people for cancer and doing research on cancer and like all this stuff like that just has a direct impact especially on the GWAT guys because yeah. everybody got exposed to like burn pit stuff and, yeah, 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 and all yeah. kinds of things back then you know so they do a lot of great stuff i get to work with those people and talk to them and like become friends with them they're freaking awesome there's tons of other people like veteran success resource group brings people together they provide them resources to be successful when they're transitioning out of the military like they're freaking awesome i went to an event with them last night at the house of blues um there there was a, a torn warriors event on monday that does stuff that they like set up like extreme sports and extreme like comp like competitive stuff for guys that were in like special operations that are like really high intensity yeah they beats. need it they need yeah, that they high want, stimulation yeah they want some stimulation but they're like maybe they've been they've lost a limb or something yeah. like that and like that kind of stuff is cool too and like being able to work with those people is cool and like meeting all those people i mean really over over overall the the experience i've had with this whole thing with it with media and everything has been overwhelmingly positive that's amazing you know like because everybody is trying to make a difference and have a positive impact on people yeah in whatever capacity that they're able to do you know yeah and like obviously some of us have more bandwidth than others based on what type of occupation we have and i try to give everything i can you know it, you, it, did you have to like take leave to come here yeah i'm on leave right now yeah so unfortunately you, you're on leave to go to work basically to work yeah. technically. well every time i take leave I, yeah. i'm working you know yeah. I, and it's not like it's not that it's just work because i do enjoy it because yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm doing stuff with with people but you are like double triple hustling double triple like i'm like one thing one thing to yeah. the next the entire time we're here talking to people because you know have you ever read tim's book uh i haven't Stars i haven't had an opportunity i need to though so this this guy he's like special operations government asset protect them at all cost type dude right yeah yeah Meanwhile, he's also like pro MMA fighter. Yeah. And so they don't want him getting hurt because right. he's like literally like a million dollar soldier that, yeah. they, that they need to protect and send him out to do crazy shit. Yeah. And so for his fights, he'll like go, can I get like a 96 or can I get whatever? <laughs> can whatever? I get a 96? Yeah. yeah. And they'll, they'll like, okay, fine. Just go home and see your family. You haven't seen your family in like a year or whatever. Yeah. And then they'll turn on the pay-per-view and literally see Tim fighting. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? What is like he doing? Like, you're supposed to be relaxing with your family. What are you going and doing fighting in the UFC right now? Yeah, and he comes back with a black eye. Just like, damn, that's so crazy that he had, like, two full-time, like, really demanding jobs. Yeah. And somehow he, like, just balanced it all. Dude, that guy has a bottomless pit of energy. I was, did I was you train with them yesterday? I worked out with him yesterday. I couldn't do it today because I was up to, like, dude, I've been sleeping, like, four hours a night for the yeah, past four yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I'm 37, I don't know how he does it. I I have a very deep tank, a deep reservoir of energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But not like not like that guy. <laughs> but I don't know what he's got, dude. Like he's got so, maybe he just naturally generates energy faster than a, like he yeah. has like a bottomless pit of. What ATP. was the workout you guys did yesterday? It was a back workout. Yeah, so it was like mostly it was a big pull. So we did was it like, like a circuit of some sort. So we we did a warm up of like we rode. Uh, 1,998 meter row on the row machine. Nine rounds of 15 pull-ups and 15 clean and jerks with like either 95 pounds or 75 pound bar. And then 
after that you row another 2023 meters so yeah, I'm, not I didn't good. Even I'm, I'm not good at all that volume stuff dude i was so <laughs> i was in a bad spot because i did back day two days before oh. that i was in a rough spot i was like oh i was like back is kind of an abs like a like not, not not the one muscle group that people work on a regular basis. It's yeah. like, well, I mean they do, but it's not like, hey, I can't wait to do back day this week. It's yeah. normally like people are like all about chest day yeah, yeah, or yeah. legs or something. So yeah. I was like, okay, we're probably gonna do something that's like legs or chest or something, right? Yeah. We get there, we do back, and I was like, crap, I'm in trouble, dude. I'm in danger, you know. But I still did it. And I was like, yeah. I didn't finish the. I didn't get to finish the 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 last piece, the last row, because we were we were like kind of short on time, but. Uh, I got through all the pull-ups and the the clean jerks and the 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 first 1900 rows or whatever 1900 meter yeah. row. But um, we did the uh, filthy 100. You ever done that? No. What's that? So Tim loves this. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh it's 10 exercises. Okay. And you have to do 100 reps each. 100 reps each. And those 10 exercises, you can choose whatever that you want. You could fill it in with whatever you want. But it's 100 reps each. You do it with a partner. Is so that today? Yeah. So if it's oh easy, my God. someone could do 50, you do 50, next exercise. Oh, oh, you can split it between a partner. Yeah, yeah you're supposed to split oh, it between. Oh, okay. And then, like, if you start pacing yourselves, because you will get start getting tired, maybe it'll yeah. be, like, 20, 20, 20, 20, 10, 10. Yeah. Or maybe 15, 15, or, like, 10, 10, 10, 10, like this. Yeah. I walk in the room, Tim sees me, he goes, Bart, you're my you're partner. You're my partner. It's, I was it's like, <laughs> and he told me he, he like called you out immediately. Yeah, because oh, I trained man. with them in Austin before. Yeah, and he. F oh, of course. And then I was like, dude, out of like 50 people here, I'm like, why me? And I'm like, let's do <laughs> why it. Why me? <laughs> we go, and of course his pace is like 100 miles an hour. Of course. I keep up maybe for the first two exercises. Yeah. The third one, if he's hitting 30, I'm already hitting like 15. He's hitting 30 again. I'm hitting like 20. Yeah. And then towards the end, when he's done with the exercise. Um, I'm laying on the floor, and he's walking around motivating people. Dude, come on, come on, guys, come on, yeah, guys. I'm yeah. like, dude, this guy's gas tank is insane. I know. I love it though because, yeah. it, like, uh, here's the thing, like, about people like Tim is that I feed off of other people's energy. Yeah. So like, yeah, I yeah, yeah. am drawn to people like that yeah. because, like, I see that energy and that intensity. It makes me want to be more intense and have more mm. energy. It makes me want to push myself harder. It makes me want to go go out there and do the same thing and start motivating people to like do more stuff and like work harder you're a great motivator for me i'm i'm motivated as shit every time i see your content because you're oh, posting thanks man you're posting tons of stuff about working out i didn't know you were 40 42 43 for for 40 zero 40 zero <laughs> yeah. 40 zero 40 zero yeah, yeah, yeah. 40 okay so i didn't know you were 40 first off so but the point is is like you look great for a 40 year old because you, you take good care of yourself you work out all the time you do like do you co do cold plunge or anything um, not like on a regular basis. How about sauna? Sauna all the time. Sauna yeah, every yeah, yeah. day for yeah, me yeah, yeah. too. I'm yeah. not cold plunge. I'm such a like baby when it comes to cold. Like I, it's hard for me to do that. But yeah, sauna is an everyday thing for me. And too. since I'm a powerlifter, I'm scared that like, like I, I, I watched like what Joe Rogan likes to do, which he does the cold plunge yeah. and he warms his body up. Sure. But I'm hitting such heavy weight. I'm scared to pull something. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then gotcha. on the reverse end. Studies have shown that cold plunge actually reduces hypertrophy on the back end, so you want to do it in the beginning. Oh, okay. So you don't want to do the, the cold plunge after your workout. No, you want to do it before. Uh, okay. So okay, I was okay. like, oh. so I, I think it would have to be one of those, like, once I, like, hang up my powerlifting shoes type thing, and if yeah. I'm just doing more, like, circuit-style training, I'll for sure do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah I definitely, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the sauna. I do the sauna uh, seven days a week, and yeah. usually... I've been doing 23 to 25 minutes at 185 degrees wow. every single time, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. awesome because, like, I get out and feel amazing. Yeah. Like, I feel like I actually did something with my life, which is the weird thing because I just sat in a, a freaking box, yeah. a wooden box for 20 minutes. You ever that see was your hot. heart rate? It's no, insane. It's, it spikes, though, I yeah. bet. Yeah. It's like static cardio. It's like 150, 160, and you're literally not doing anything. You're just chilling. But your heart's like, doosh, 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 Dude, that's doosh. awesome. See, that's... Yeah. That, that, to me, is, like, the, the greatest rest day thing. Because yeah. I do it seven days a week, even on my off days. Like, I only ch actually lift five days a week. I'll do three days on and then a day off for, like, re let my body rest. And oh, then, cool. And then two days on and one day off. And then I just alternate like that. But I do sauna every single day of the week as yeah. long as I'm not, like, in the field or something. I've been seeing you get after it. I try to, man. I've been trying like to. Lifting like, lifting heavy. Yeah, I've been, dude, I've been trying to, like, the squats specifically. Like, my brother came down for, for the holidays and... 
whenever I get around my brother or like other people, I'm lifting with other people. Like I'm more motivated to like go a little heavier. You and these are brothers with probably some competitive energy. Yeah, huh? yeah, sure. And and like, especially with squats, I've noticed that all my other lifts go up when mm. my squats get better. Oh yeah. You know, just because you're like you're just like. I don't know what it is. I think it has something to do with testosterone, maybe. Yeah. Somebody told me once that, like, your legs is where all your testosterone is stored, but I'm like, that's your pituitary gland, I thought. like, But I don't know. But I, what I think in my mind, and I majored in this stuff in, in college, so I should probably know, and it's kind of unfortunate. You're I don't a remember. kinesiology or something? Or well, physiology? Like edu- uh, sorry, exercise sports science. Oh, okay, okay. But in my mind, I think the fact that it's like, okay, your legs are the biggest muscle group on your body. Yeah. So it takes a lot more energy to, to recover when you work them really hard. Yeah, yeah. So I would imagine your body has to compensate by releasing extra t- testosterone to help the repair process for that large amount of tissue. Yeah. So in my head, I, I feel like that's what's happening maybe, and maybe that's why my other lifts get better. Yeah. I can't – I don't know if that's I true. I just like it because it's really hard. I do too. And it's like one of the – like – like deadlifts are technically only working out on one side, yeah. right? Because it's like coming down, you don't have to train. It's you mostly posterior. Yeah, you're just lifting it up, like on the eccentric, on the yeah. concentric. You just lift, ride the weight down. Yeah. Squats, you're technically like going down hard. I mean, you're you're flexing going down and flexing going up. Your whole body, bro. Like yeah. Core. That's another thing. Core. You gotta flex the crap out of your core for that, especially yeah. going deep, deep. You know. Yeah. Which I love, like. I get more satisfaction and gratification from hit breaking 90 with 315, even if I only do, like, 3 to 5. Yeah. You know, than I do if I'm, like, just hitting 90 with and it. And squats is the only exercise I've ever sharded on myself. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you're squeezing hard. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. you're pushing, you're, like, flex your core so hard, bro. Yeah. You That's accidentally. The, it's the only one. I've never done it on bench, deadlift, pull-ups, anything, just mainly squats. Yeah. yeah. Squat, I've, come, I've come dangerously close. I've come dangerously close where i'm like yep i gotta stop i've also had a point where i picked it up off the rack and i was, I was like nope and put it right back down and went to the bathroom because <laughs> i was like no we would have had a problem you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah. i didn't wear my depends today so i need to make sure i go take care of this i actually shit. had to go to the bathroom i was like whoa i was done i was proud of myself of the of the set yeah and i was like wait why is it like warm and wet <laughs> so i went to the bathroom and i checked i was like okay this is disgusting so I just took off my underwear and I just folded and I threw in the I trash threw can. The trash can I'll, I'll, bro, just go com- I'll just go commando the rest of the workout. Bro, the trash can is the most like the most stereotypical place. Everybody yeah. just tosses it. Like, I was like I'm gonna <laughs> place. I'm throwing it away. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's funny, bro. <laughs> well, so what? So tell me uh, a little bit about like what got you into like the Barbell Brigade brand and like what got you into social media and stuff? Because I like I ha- I really don't know a lot about like your your like background with that stuff. Story? Yeah, the origin story. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so I went to, I joined the Marine Corps, and then as a reservist, and then, you know, as a reserve, you, you do boot camp, MCT, or MOS school. Sure. You come back, you go to college. So I was kind of doing, like, that college life where you're, you're, you're in college, and then you go to drills, like, every month. Yeah. And uh, I was, like, trying to get my, my community college credits down. And then the summer, right before I transferred, I actually didn't really have too much to do. Okay. And that's when, like... YouTube was kind of a thing, yeah. and I didn't really know that it was actually a public, um, like a public platform. I thought yeah. it was more like, have you, do you remember Photo Bucket? Yeah, I remember Photo Bucket. Where you Photo like Bucket, load yeah. pictures up yeah. or whatever, and it's kind of like online storage. Yeah. So my friend was sent me a video, like a funny video that he did, sure. and he was sending it to me via YouTube, and I was laughing my ass off, and I was like, oh, this is hilarious. So I made a video, I uplo- uploaded to YouTube to send to him. And then both of our videos kind of started going viral, and we're like, we yeah. didn't even know public was viewing this. Really? So during that summer, we're like, why don't we like team up and just do stupid videos together? Yeah. So that ended up kind of like picking up a little bit of momentum. And then in my junior and senior year in college, I kind of had like intense senioritis now, because I was a, a bio major. And then I was like, and I was supposed to go to med school. That's why I chose kind of like a short MOS. I was like, what am I gonna, what can I pick where I'm like, MOS school, back, go straight to college. I want to go to med school. And then yeah. at that time, I was like, and then I, I wanted to do uh, medicine either as a naval officer or maybe as an army officer. I was kind of ha- had the whole thing planned. Yeah. And then so this whole comedy, like social media thing was like a big curveball. Oh, okay. And I was like, and then I'd had the, like, I would just be in class. I'm like, dude, I don't really like any of this stuff. Yeah. And I just want to, I want to go back to making content. So when we graduated, me and my buddy, we kind of had like this pact. We're like, okay. We don't know what social media really is just yet, because this is like, I think 2000, like eight or eight, something. 2009. Okay. okay. 
So we had a couple friends that were like way at the forefront, like one million followers at the time. Yeah. And they had like pretty legit like salaries pretty much. Okay. Or like getting paid like from AdSense. In 2008? Yeah. Damn. So we're like, okay, <coughs> it, it is viable yeah. if you're at the top. Sure. But at that time, we only get paid like a thousand bucks for like six months worth of videos. Okay, yeah. So you had to, you had to, you were starting at the like bottom. Bottom. Yeah. But then we had a lot of momentum, which was yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, that's still cool. Yeah. So we spent a year pushing hard, and then that was enough to get our little production company going. And then so all the post-military dreams out the window, med medical school things out the window. We just started going 100% on doing sketch comedy on YouTube. Okay. And then I would say maybe like three years in, people were always like, yo, Bart. You look kind of jacked. Can you like share like your fitness programs or whatever? And I was just like, I just like lifting. Yeah. I, I'm not a personal trainer or anything like that. Sure. So I just started another mm -hmm. channel. I was like, you know what? How about this? Like, I'll I'll just start documenting my journeys. Yeah. And then you guys follow along. And th th this just came along because somebody was like, you you look pretty in shape. Just like comments. Yeah, just comments just from like videos. Just like thumbs up type of comments. And you this know? all came from the sketch comedy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Com completely organic. So That's bananas. So it wasn't like, oh, I want to start a fitness brand. Yeah. It was just like, hey, you should like, like coach people or something. And yeah. I would just see that all the time. And That's I'm like, cool, man. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, all right, I'll start a channel. I'll just document my training because I train anyways. Sure. So I signed up for my very, very first powerlifting meet um, just for the and giggles. I don't even know what it was. Yeah. But I fell in love with it. I came back to LA, couldn't find a powerlifting gym. So at that time, we had our little production office, and I hit up about 20 of my other friends that are also on YouTube and stuff. Right. And I was like, hey, like, what if we got a container, like a 20-footer? Yeah. And we all chip in, I don't know, like 50 to 100 bucks, and we just fill it up with just random bumper plates and stuff like that. Yeah. Within, like, 20 minutes of just me texting my friends, so many people were like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. So I'm like, I think this could be bigger than what it is. Yeah. So uh, I went to Barnes & Noble. I don't know anything about business. Me and my wife, Gio, went to Barnes & Noble, got like a business book that had um, like worksheets at the end of every chapter. Okay. So what you're supposed to do is like you read the chapter, you do the worksheet, and then yeah. you end up pulling all the worksheets out, and that's like your first business plan. Oh, okay. So it kind of helped you like frame, like set up a framework for it and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So me and my wife were like, okay, let's just do this in the part-time while we're shooting all the sketch comedy stuff. Yeah. And if there's a big enough hurdle, then we won't do it. But like, let's just make this kind of like a fun project between me and her. Yeah. So like one of them's like brainstorm your name, their logo and whatever. And right. we never really had any hurdles, even going to city hall, getting permits. There were no real big hurdles. So For setting up your business. Yeah. Did you, or is your, is Bar Barbell Brigade an LLC or LLC, is it? yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So now it's like, now the there's escort. actually like a bunch of them. Like there's Barbell Brigade Apparel, Barbell Brigade Performance for the supplements. Barrel Brigade Gym for the gym, Barrel Brigade Productions for like the media company, and That's there's even bananas. and there's even a Barrel Brigade like holding group that kind of governs. So now it's like way more sophisticated. Is it, is it a, like uh, uh, an S corp? It's an S corp, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, you got it. You got to have an S corp because you're, you're yeah. probably you have employees and stuff at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at that time, it was just it was just started off as just Barrel Brigade. LLC, LLC until we yeah. started building all these other entities. Yeah, but that's still cool, man. Like this is one of the cool things I think about, like people that I, so many people I know that like have served in the military, like have I have served honorably, and then they move on, and they a lot of them start their own businesses, and they're very successful, like yourself. Like you work your butt off, dude. Like I've seen, like how much stuff you've got going on that you're managing. I'm like, holy cow, dude. This guy is like like slaying it out there man you know trying to yeah yeah no, that's freaking awesome and i can't believe it started all just because people were like commenting on videos like your sketch comedy videos and we're like hey dude how like what do you do for training what do you do work out <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're like, it's yeah okay yeah it's it wasn't like some giant mission statement yeah you know, it was just like one thing led to another so we built the gym first okay okay yeah so we built the gym because that's i was like oh there's no powerlifting gym in la so i wanted to build a gym just so i can train at it's in la yeah, it's in L.A. It's still there now. Yeah, it's still there now. Okay. So it's, this is our 10th year there. 10th year? Yeah, and we needed to, like, get more equipment because we started ex to expand. Yeah. And at that time, I knew a little bit about merchandising from our sketch comedy. So I'm like, oh, let's start, like, an apparel company to go with the brand. Yeah. And then that took off. So it was just kind of, like, a very organic thing, you yeah. know? And then uh, in 2016, we started the supplement side of things just because I had my son. Oh, okay. And um, no pre-workout was strong enough for like wake like having a kid 
is like imagine having like Firewatch every two hours. I that's what I've heard. Yeah, that's so one like, of the reasons I've avoided it for so long. So I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> so fucking tired. And every pre workout I would have to take, it was like double scoop every single time. And I'm yeah. like, I'm just gonna make one that, but now it's like all pre workouts are crazy. Oh, but yeah, I, but I, I was like, well, I'm just gonna make one where you only need one scoop. Sure. So it was just kind of like a very like organic, what's the next thing, what's the next thing? And it's never been like, what's this big like mastermind Elon Musk plan yeah. that I have, you know? How many milligrams of caffeine is your pre-workout got in it? Uh, now it's 350. 350? Okay, yeah, that's yeah, about yeah. about what a lot of these people are having yeah, but in before now. it was all 150 to 200. Yeah. So everyone with double scoop. But I think now like you got kids drinking Frappuccinos oh, when they're like 10 years old. So they're like... That's water. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dude, people, we have such a high caffeine tolerance in this country at this point because yeah. everybody's just, like, on the grind. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, grind, yeah. bro. So we're, like, yeah. because we're on the grind, we're, like, we okay, I need I need to wake up and get, like, 500 milligrams of caffeine before I start my day. Like, today I had a, fr- uh, what's it called, a cold brew yeah. from Starbucks or something. I don't know. It like, like I was like, give me the biggest one you've got, cause I'm so I'm like gr- I'm like exhausted, sluggish. I like I need to get going, and I didn't work out this morning with you guys yeah. like I should have. But you know that's why I, I usually try to if I if, so here's the way I do caffeine. So if I know I'm gonna work out that day and I know I'm gonna train, I'll have one cup of coffee in the morning before I go to work, and I'll eat oh, okay. I, and I'll eat five eggs. So you kind of like reserve the caffeine for later. I on. reserve it for later because I want to make sure that when I do take my pre-workout before I go lift, that it actually hits me to the dome piece, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. let's let's sla- like let's break the drywall, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. B- I try to limit myself in the mornings to just one cup of coffee, and then I'll take the pre-workout later. But on off days when I'm not lifting i'll still be going to the sauna like i said every seven days right or every day of the week for seven days every day uh, but if it's not a training day then it's like okay maybe i'll drink a little bit more caffeine throughout the morning but i try to cut my caffeine no later than like midnight every or not midnight midnight <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. every every day at noon i try to cut oh, it just because it's like the half life of six hours yeah, right yeah yeah yeah. and I, like i um i don't know the older i get so you're responsible with i it. try to be but it's like I'm also irresponsible because sometimes I'll get off work a little later and I'm like, I need to go to the gym because yeah. that's, that's also like my mental health place. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. my meditation every yeah. day. So I, I'll i take the pre-workout Do you anyways. like dry scooping or are you like mixing it? No, I mix it for sure, yeah, because it's made for mixing with water. Yeah. Like if it, if it gets dissolved properly in water before you drink it, it's going to hit you faster. Whereas yeah. if you pound it like dry and you try to chug some water, it's not going to mix properly in your stomach mm-hmm. and you're probably not going to absorb it as well as you would if you were drinking it as like after it's fully dissolved in a liquid yeah so i know that's like a trendy thing for the kids to yeah, do that yeah, stuff yeah. but i'm like no let's not do that you know yeah a lot of the stuff is is meant to be mixed with water it is yeah, yeah. and normally the way that i do my pre-workout is i'll have a scoop of my pre i'll have a, a scoop of creatine um and then i'll put like some bcaa's in there and uh, maybe sometimes um, sometimes I'll put some, like, electrolytes in there. What else do I put in there? I, I borrowed my friend's recipe, and yeah. I started putting, like, half a Gatorade in there. Okay, so for some electrolytes. And some carbs. Yeah, and some carbs, yeah, too. Yeah, because then, like, sometimes if you're training hard, you'll, like, feel hungry mid-workout. Yeah. And then now you're, like, distracted. Yeah. But the carbs give you, like, this little extra... Yeah, a little doing, bit extra. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing that, and it feels good. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Yeah, no, that's a, I used to just do the plain pre, but I mix it up a little bit with some uh, with a bunch of different things. Obviously, creatine doesn't matter what time of day you take yeah. it. It's about it's gonna Loading. have the same. Yeah, you're just trying to load it. Yeah, it's gonna have the same same impact. I also try to make sure I eat at least one. I try to eat a steak every night almost Ooh. because because that way you're also getting creatine from that. You got a specific cut meat. you like? Uh, I prefer ribeyes. Ribeyes my preferred just because I like that fatty, savory, yeah, yeah. you know, chewy thing, you know. Yeah. But I do like filet. I like New York strips. I like porterhouse, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, I prefer ribeye. I can only eat ribeye like maybe like once a month because I'm cutting. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so like, you, you're sticking with sirloins probably or yeah. fillet. You, fillet would be ideal because it's pretty. It's about as yeah. It's pretty lean. It's pretty lean. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty lean. Yeah, I go to Costco and they have like really good sized sirloin. They're like pretty thick. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then like over time, you're like, oh, the sirloin's really good. Yeah. And then you go to a restaurant and you you order ribeye and you're like, oh my god, this the sirloin. Is I know. <laughs> it's I not know. What it's supposed to be. That's what I did. So I've I've did a I did a bodybuilding competition in 2021. Oh, sick. I've only done one. I've never done another one. Are you gonna ever do another? I'm, I would like to one day really? at some point. I just need I need to find the time. I need to figure out a time to do it and set it up. And I need to get a coach 
Yeah. And I, I, the big thing I'll need is I need to get opposing coach that I can work with in person. Yeah. Because, like, that was the one hardest thing for me. Yeah. I felt like my posing was absolute dog doo-doo because <laughs> I, I, dude, I, I, like, I didn't know what I was doing. And I did posing a little bit on camera with my coach, which my coach was awesome. Was, like, his name was uh, Kim Otto. He's, like, a famous uh like coach, coach. Yeah, yeah boy famous coach new fitness coach out in california um but i just need i need somebody there to like show me in person for that kind of stuff yeah because those little tweaks help yeah so much yeah dude it really does yeah. especially and, and you've done bodybuilding shows so you're you're for sure i just did one and that's probably my last one yeah but so you, you still know what the process was yeah, like yeah, and yeah. How, how difficult it is insane you know? yeah but i trained so, for a marathon and i did yeah. the bodybuilding show and i think the bodybuilding show is harder in my opinion because i love to eat I do too. That so, was the hardest so part. So marathon, you could like you train your ass off, right? Yeah. Four hour, five, six hour runs. Yeah. But if I can eat like a bowl of pasta after, I don't care. Oh, I'm like, yeah. I'll, I'll like work me to the ground. But sure. if I can eat, I'm good. Yeah. Bodybuilding, you're just like, just like eating fucking leaves. I know, bro. <laughs> you're, like, <laughs> you're like, oh, I can have a one cup of rice all day today, and yeah. that's okay. Like. Yeah, did that that was a hard but the, I remember eating the sirloins cuz that was the only yeah. type of steak yeah, I could yeah. eat while I was prepping was yeah. the sirloins cuz like you just can't eat any fat like anything else yeah. No energy drinks at all, like only black coffee during yeah. that time. Yeah. Egg whites for everything, not whole eggs like I do today, which I love whole eggs yeah, rather than egg whites. I like I eat five whole eggs every morning, like 100%. Ooh. And no no carbs in the morning. I'll usually eat like five whole eggs. You do them a certain way, scrambled or you like over eating? Yeah, scramble them. Yeah, okay. just scramble them. I'll throw like I'll put some salt pepper, uh, salt pep salt pepper, maybe some garlic. And then, like, I'll sprinkle some cheese on the top, you know, because I don't mind having a little bit of fat in there. Fat's good for you. You know, yeah. you need fat in your diet anyway, you know. Um, so I'll eat that in the morning just with a cup of black coffee and no carbs. And then usually I'll wait till about 10 o'clock and then I'll have, like, six to eight ounces of chicken with a cup of rice. And then another four hours later, another six to eight ounces of chicken with a cup of rice. And then I usually have a steak and some potatoes or something that night or whatever. But um, I usually end up eating about four or five times a day. Do you... Uh use the chow hall at all or no 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 i mean i since i live off base i get i get uh basic allowance for subsistence yeah you know, when you live off base and stuff so chow hall is mainly just for people that live in the barracks for the most part oh, although i see although i can five minutes okay although although i can it's like i it just makes more sense for me to cook for myself you know yeah um i will say when i was in i was deployed this past year uh they had some dining facilities that are like coalition owned kind of dining facilities were everybody like, sick or no they were good man they weren't bad like for for where we were located dude we were like in iraq and we had some decent chow out there man like better chow than i've had in like the states before oh wow yeah have you ever been to camp mujuk in korea I've never been to Mujuk, but that's it was like uh, by chance that we didn't go. Because what we ended up doing is when, when, the one time I've been to Korea, we stayed, uh, we were in the field for a large majority of it. So we were like eating the UGRs and field rations and stuff yeah. like that and MREs. But when we stayed on a base, we ended up staying on Osan Air Force Base oh. for, for like four weeks. So we we were eating like Air Force Chow, which is well, really, really which is like <laughs> really good. It's like gourmet, bro. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. really, it was like eating it like Emerald Lagasse's. You know what I'm saying? Like every yeah. day, and we were like, we. I remember the first time we walked out of the Chow, we were like looking at each other, like, bro, we've been getting screwed over this whole time. The like whole we could have been eating this good this whole time. Like yeah. Man, it was, yeah. But th we spent about a month out there. We did a bunch of stuff in Korea. Worked with the, the Korean Marine Corps and all that stuff. I'm yeah. sure you said you've been to Mujak. Yeah, so uh, I went to the Korean chow hall. So I was working like a night shift, like 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. Yeah. And we would go to like the Marine Corps chow hall. And it was like, because uh, they don't have running water, like a uh, potable water. Yeah. So everything's like, you know, they thrown in. And so like your mashed potatoes and gravy is together. Oh, and it's okay. like, you know, like powdered eggs, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then we go to the Korean chow hall, and it was like no bullshit, like going to K-Town restaurant. No There's kidding. There's like dumplings, rice, oh. like bulgogi, like. Bro, dumplings are so fire. Yeah, and I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, give me night shift every day, because that was the only time where uh, you would work till 9 p.m. till 9 a.m. Oh. And then their officers were like, they come over to our chow hall. And I'm like, yes, 
<laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, it's worth it, dude. That's so freaking sick, man. Yeah. The Korean food is is fire in general. So good. Bulgogi, yeah. like bro, so like, good. You know, they made us a, a gallon freezer bag of kimchi oh, and shit. gave it to us while like they like the Korean Marines made it for us. I saw, so and cool. we were we were just smashing it like. We did an Inchon landing reenactment when I was there, like with the Korean Marines. Oh wow! Which was sick, and we stayed on a, a Korean warship while we were out there in the like in and in the bay, and we were just doing the landings from the ship every day. That's so. It cool. It was super cool, man. It was like really good time. We were eating good food the whole time we were out there, like local local chow. Yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. Man. Real cool. It was, it was a really good time. I had a lot of fun out there. But anyway, hey, look, man, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come sit down with me man it's been an absolute pleasure finally getting to talk to you in, in like person for a change instead of the internet like, yeah i was super looking forward to it too i didn't dude. even know we were going to be able to do it because i know you were coming down here but I, I was still busy yeah and it was cool that it was just it ended up happening and working dude, out it was just dest manifest destiny bro Hell yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah yeah and like yeah I, I appreciate you taking the time to come out here like because i know you are a busy man you're managing a lot of stuff not as so. busy as you though no you're busier than i am man you're managing a lot of stuff and you've got a kid too you know yeah. so like you're 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 out you're dude you're 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 killing it out there man thank you like, man. and and i and i uh, i got a lot of respect for what you do and i i look up to dudes like you because i'm like if he can do it so can i you know what i mean like i think you're already doing like two times more than well, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know i don't know if i'm there dude i got a long way to go before i feel like i've actually made a difference yet but that's mm, i think that's that, awesome like maintaining that hunger i think helps you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. keeping that hunger that drive to keep going so yeah and but all the stuff you're into, like all the philanthropy stuff. Yeah. If I could help in any way, hit me up. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll be, you know, I'm always down to jump in. And dude, help absolutely, out. man, 100. Yeah. percent And if I if I get another chance to come out to Vegas, like I do, I want to do a workout with you. Hell yeah, let's do it. Like we need to for sure. Let's do it. All right, cool, man. Well, I appreciate it again. Thanks, thanks for coming out, dude. Thank you. All right.